Welcome in the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for finding us on your favorite podcast app. You can use Podbean, you can use Spotify, iTunes, but thank you again for finding us there or on Dash Radio. You can download the Dash Radio app, search for the Nothing But Net channel. We're there every day at 7 p.m. Also, my new show goes to two hours tomorrow on onsideradio.com. Only Five Reasons Sports guests. And we cover more than just the Miami Heat, although we will do some heat coverage there as well. Five reasons sports.com, F I V E reasons sports.com. All the latest Miami Heat articles from Brady Hawk, the latest on the Dolphins, Marlins from David Fernandez, Craig Davis, and more. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We're finally talking just basketball here, although you can still bet football there, but locally it's just basketball. Ever since I started five on the floor, people ask me for betting tips. Sometimes they go the other direction, but I always get asked who you got the Lakers, the Clippers, the heat, the Celtics. I'll tell you what I tell them where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. So I tell people to bet with my bookie. That's my bookie.ag. My bookies rep is rock solid. They've got the best odds, contests, and promotions in the business. They're the only place I trust to handle my NBA related bets, the one sports book guaranteed to give me the best lines for the national championship college football game, of course, between Alabama and Ohio state on January 11th and on the NFL playoff games. You know, I won't give out my stamp of approval easily, especially something as important as this with money to earn it. You got to be the best at what you do. My bookie is the best sports book out there, period. It's simple. Sign up, use the promo code five on the floor, spell it out. F I V E on the floor, get your deposit matched halfway up to a thousand bucks that's right five on the floor get it matched halfway up to a thousand bucks so head over to mybookie.ag you want to add a little excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet and now today's episode one two three four five on the floor welcome to five on the floor a daily show on the miami heat and the nba featuring ethan skolnick with Alex Toledo and Greg Sylvander, part of the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. Here's today's floor plan. The game is not even over yet, but it's over. It's been over for a little while, and so we want to get this one out to everybody quickly. Also, you can check out the post-game stream, which is being hosted tonight by our guy, Royal Shepard, who's going to join us here on the podcast at some point over the next week as well. So check out all the other contributors to five reasons sports, but I got our core here and I feel like the heat found their core tonight. Also, I got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at tropical blanket and you can follow Greg Sylvander at Greg Sylvander. So we're not going to dwell too much guys on the win itself. The heat needed it. They're now three and three. This is the kind of team they should beat like this, a team like Oklahoma City, but we didn't know if they would actually do it. I think we should focus on, to me, what was the most important development of the game, which was in the sixth try, six games, six different starting lineups. I think Eric Spolster might have found something sustainable, and he might have waited for this game to roll it out so that it would get a little bit of confidence going into the back-to-back against Boston. So the starting lineup tonight, Kelly Olynyk inserted as the starting power forward alongside Bam Adebayo, of course, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero in the other three spots and the core four in the rotation behind them. And Brady's written articles about this, but it makes sense. Dragic, uh, Achua, Bradley, and Iguodala being the core four. Other guys like Akpala, Harkless, none got in later, but that was the core four tonight. Greg, Let's start here. Do you like it? And then I'm going to go to Alex on this one. Is it sustainable? We'll definitely like it compared to what we've seen recently with uh, the other combinations next to Bam up front. I mean, I feel like Olenek had a great game individually, but also uh, compliments Bam Adebayo in a lot of in, in ways that that really help him focus on the things that he uh, needs to focus on from a defensive perspective. But let's just not get lost in that this game, the Heat shot 50% from three, and mm-hmm. they didn't get out rebounded and they also didn't turn the ball over nearly at the clip that they have been. So just in terms of like, yes, I think we should absolutely dive into the lineups. Sometimes I don't know what comes first. Is it the lineup that, that brought these numbers or are the numbers making us look at this lineup as something that is um, something that is, you know, something they can use long-term. 
Yeah, I mean, Alex, I mean, that's that's kind of the point. It's kind of a chicken or the egg thing, because I think a lot of lineups would have looked pretty good against this team. But the fact that Olenek was such a fact that 20 to nothing run, he propelled a lot of it in the third quarter. And we've talked a lot about the Olenek bam combination that was so effective a couple of years ago. Spolster got away from last year, I think, in part because of Kelly's inconsistency. But they've always and the played. Injuries. And injuries, but they've always played well together, right? So uh, it, tonight was one of the nice, those nights, Alex, that I looked at it and I was like, okay, we've talked about a lot of possibilities, and I know you, and uh, we've thrown this one out there on the pod. It's not, it's not like it totally came out of left field, but like you watched it tonight, or I watched it, and I was kind of like, okay, why didn't they just go to this before? Like it, yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense compared to sort of forcing Andre Iguodala in to play the four in the starting lineup. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of the last option that they hadn't really tried out yet. And we mentioned it on the last podcast, and I, I think it's sustainable. I think that was, you know, the question you asked earlier. I think it's sustainable. You know, Kelly putting up 19 or whatever isn't sustainable. He, you know, he's going to have a mismatch versus some of these weaker defensive guys on, on OKC. And just in general, it's a bad team, whatever. He's still going to be a positive player to me in that lineup. Like, I think it gives him a fifth guy who can shoot, pass, and just kind of keeps the ball moving a little bit. Whereas I think uh, Harkless, Myers, I mean, KZ is obviously inexperienced. They're kind of stiffs on offense so far. And, uh, you know, we saw a lot less of the those other guys, and we saw more Kelly tonight. I don't, like I said, I don't think he's going to be scoring a lot for you every time, but I think he's going to be a great fit for the, for the lineup in general. Well, and especially when Bam and Jimmy combined for only three turnovers, that helps mm -hmm. out a lot too. <laughs> it's all, about all of the things that we talked about yeah. on that last spot. It's very well, at least for tonight. Everything that we right, so that's why, and I think Greg, you're right. Like I, I don't think we should get too lost in the lineup. Although I think projecting forward, that's the most important thing, in terms of you know what they're going to use going up against Boston. But but you, all the issues we talked about in the last podcast, right? Turnovers, they kept them down tonight. Uh, rebounding, they, I mean, look, they made so many shots. I mean, how much did they out rebound them by? They, they, I'm looking at it right now. They were. As we 46, speak. 37 as we speak. Okay, so right. And if you look at the rebounding, it was pretty spread out. Um, nine from Hero, which is becoming a thing, by the way. Hero had seven, nine, and eight tonight. So didn't shoot well, but close to a triple-double. Adebayo had eight. Duncan had four. Olenek had eight. Butler had three. Uh, Precious had seven in just 19 minutes. And, uh, well, I mean, Silva came off the bench and had four. I mean, there's some garbage time stuff going on here. None ended up with eight points in five minutes. But, like... Yeah, they out rebounded them. Okay, so we talked about that, but again, that's also chicken or the egg, right? Like because I mean, they missed fewer shots today than they've been missing, so the other team gets fewer rebounds. But the turnover thing, they kept the turnovers down. I mean, they've been they've been up, you know, worst team in the league in terms of turnovers. They had the 14 offense was way more coherent, right? The offense was much more coherent. The rotation was more coherent. And then the biggest thing, and I don't want to get too far in the pod without us talking about this, was I kept tweeting out today. Look. If Jimmy and Bam are aggressive and Spolscher talked about this in the pregame, he says, we go as, you know, we go through our two best players. And we talked about this on the pregame show on the YouTube channel. If Jimmy and Bam are aggressive, everything else kind of falls into place. And Jimmy and Bam were 10 of 14 in the first half. They didn't have a ton of free throws, but they were 10 of 14 in the first half. They pretty much got wherever they wanted. Um, they weren't overpassing, which is one of the issues that they typically have. Jimmy was six of six from the line in the game. They ended up combining for 38 points, 11 rebounds and 10 assists. Like, and there were plus 42 combined. So like in just 54 combined minutes. So like if their two best players are playing like that, everything feeds off of it. So yes, the Kelly insertion into the lineup, I think helps. I think that it makes a lot of sense. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the bench because I think that's where it makes the most sense. It allows Spolster to put a coherent bench rotation together. I think the one he wants, but it all starts with the fact like we were like, okay, when is Jimmy going to look like Jimmy? And I know it was against OKC and this team is like three years away from being seriously competitive, but Jimmy looked like Jimmy tonight, Greg. I mean, that's, to, I mean, he looked like the guy we were used to in the finals. And if people were wondering, is it still in there? It's still in there. Absolutely. And he can channel that at any moment. And I think that that's going to be an exercise that Heat fans are going to have to endure all season. And that's just practicing patience, knowing that, uh, he's going to have to pace himself heading towards the playoffs. It is a grind. We saw the heavy lifting he had to do um, 
as the roster is currently constructed, guess what? He's going to have to do that kind of heavy lifting again, if they're going to advance as far as they did in uh, the 2020 run. So um, it's good to know he still has it in there. And um, I I misspoke earlier about uh, turnovers and I just need to clarify it because it's an even better statistic. Bam and Jimmy combined for 10 assists and only one turnover. And then Tyler hero eight assists and only two turnovers. So that just cleaning that up in itself, um, whatever Olenek did by inserting him in the lineup to make that work, let's do that again. Well, and the other thing is you mentioned turnovers. So this is where the numbers get skewed at the end of the game. Uh, Akpala had one, Silva had three. Oh my God. So at least, four, at least, at least, I mean, Silva had three in five minutes. So at least Productive. four of the turnovers Right, very productive. Four of the 14 turnovers, at the very least, uh, were garbage time turnovers. So, I mean, to me, they don't even count. They, they had 10 turnovers when it mattered. They shot 47% from three, 57% overall. Uh, they were only 10 of 18 from the line, but uh, didn't have a lot of offensive rebounds, but they uh, out-rebounded them 47 to 38. So the numbers look like they should look. And here's the other number that really jumps out. 34 assists on 46 field goals. That's the heat offense from early yes. last season. Yep. Okay. And, and so, and, and you had, you had seven assists from Dragic, eight from hero, six from Jimmy, no four dribbling. from Bam, three from Duncan, right? The ball popped tonight. We don't want to overrate this against this opponent, but like sometimes you just need a cleanup game. And one of the problems that he'd have had, cause they had the, str- the toughest strength of schedule in the league. They haven't really had an opportunity for just a game to clean it up. They needed it before Boston, and this thing's brutal through the end of January. They're not going to get a lot of these, so they needed to do it tonight. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about the bench rotation because I actually think that this is as much about that, and it always is with Spolstra, as it is about the starting lineup. But before we do, I want to tell you about our friends over at You Break wheelfix.com this is based in north miami our friend mark down there i'm pretty sure he's gonna have the vice wave colors before long because he's, he's already has the vice colors. so i gotta i gotta ask him about that but you gotta check this out if you want to anything you want to do with your wheels you can basically do that you can do the powder coating down there again they're a wheel repair and refinishing company located in north miami with 15 years of experience they fix the bent wheels the cracked wheels that are damaged on the street, streets of south florida they got the fast turnaround times on most repairs they even offer the loaner wheels when they fix or refinish the wheels so you can keep your car on the road without interruption if your wheels are faded or peeling you break wheel fix offers complete refinishing back to factory standards or again if you're just bored they got over five thousand different finishes to customize the look of the wheels they do have the vice i'm going to ask them about the vice wave i'm sure those are coming they're not there yet 305-748-0112 that's 305-748-0112 or follow them on Instagram. Just check them out on Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Yelp. They're everywhere. You break wheelfix.com. Mention five reasons sports and you get 15% off anything that you do with them. All right, let's get to this. And Brady wrote a piece about this about two weeks ago. I mean, Brady's kind of our resident soothsayer in the network. He seems to know what's coming, although he didn't have tonight's starting lineup right. But basically, he put out there the bench core four. And the bench core four makes a lot of sense. And I've talked a lot about, and not saying this team's going to go on a winning streak like this, but the 2012-2013 team took off when Spolstra put Haslam in the starting lineup, took Miller out of the rotation, and basically decided to go every single game with the same four off the bench. It was Battier, it was, uh, it was Ray Allen, it was Norris Cole, and it was Chris Anderson. And they were out there every single game, and he did this thing where he put basically three minutes left in the first quarter. He took either LeBron or Dwayne out with the rest of the starting lineup, left one of them in with that core four, let him play for three minutes, then let him play for three minutes to start the second quarter with the other Miami Heat perimeter superstar. He did this for three months. They won 27 straight games, okay? I feel like that's Eric's comfort zone. He doesn't want to play 10, 11, 12 guys. He doesn't want to shrink it to seven or eight. It's nine. That's the magic number for Eric. It allows him to have flexibility where in with this team, he could put either Bam out there with him or Jimmy out there with him and flip it. And that's what happened tonight. And so Alex, I'll go to you on this. You've got again, Dragic, Achua, they have natural chemistry Bradley seems to fit in virtually every lineup um, that you could possibly put him in. And then Iguodala is a glue piece and seems to work really well with Bradley already. 
Do you think that's a great, I think this is as much about that as it is about getting Kelly into the starting lineup. I think it's about setting up this core four that these four guys know they're going to play together all the time. You see, that's an interesting point by you. I hadn't thought about it that way, just because I think the bench to me was already so effective throughout these first few games. Like I thought that was the, you know, the kind of one of the bright spots for the heat is that the bench was still so good. Like they were really, really good. And, but I, I do like what you're saying though, because I think Kelly is a guy that you can take out of that bench and it's still productive four like you said I, I it's interesting that he's at nine right now after we've seen him play so many guys and like you said that's what he, he goes to in the past uh I, i'm interested to see if he's going to keep doing that for the uh, for the rest of the regular season like if he's just going to stick to the nine if there's you know some night's going to be a 10th maybe an 11th you know probably not an 11th but you know what i'm saying like i wonder if this is just going to be the permanent rotation going forward unless something happens in a trade to me the bench it, it makes a lot of sense like i think iguodala and bradley are essentially good rotation players for a winning team, but not essential, not starters. Like I wouldn't mind either of them starting in, in general in a vacuum, but I think the kind of mix that they have right now is what makes the most sense to, you know, get the most out of everybody. I think on defense, it makes a lot of sense to have, you know, Bradley, Iguodala and Precious there coming off the bench and helping out Goron. Like Precious and Goron is really, to me, the the source of the bench offense, that, that Goron Precious pick and roll. Whereas before it was kind of, you know, Kelly handoff to Goron, Kelly Goron, I mean, uh, Kelly Gore on pick and roll. And so I think, I think they have enough now. Like I think they, they, you can take Kelly away from that bench and still feel good about what you have. And I just think it brings a little bit more stability to both of the lineups that they have. Yeah. Tonight's bench lineup and going nine deep the way they did, this felt like, like if Spolster had to identify a playoff lineup today, this would be it. Like this would be the lineup he would go with and that he trusts most. Um, the thing that I will be watching as the season unfolds is that I just did not anticipate Andre Iguodala having to be an everyday rotation player for an entire season. And I don't know um, who the player is that's going to fill that role because obviously there's already been issues filling some roles in the starting lineup, never mind the bench. And th th this is what's going to get weird if – if we go through this regular season and Andre Iguodala continues to get those consistent minutes um, mm -hmm. and KZ Akpala never gets that chance, it, uh, it's going to raise eyebrows on like, why is he not getting that opportunity? Because you would think that they would try to preserve Iggy. And I know that right now they're probably getting their bearing straight. So they're playing the veterans, but at some point you would think they'd have to turn to the young guys. And I'm hoping to see more of KZ uh, or, I mean, I just don't know who else is going to fill that role. But, but it's interesting that you say that Greg, because I think this actually sets it up for KZ a little bit, because I think basically what this signals is none Harkless and Leonard are becoming extra parts. And I think we talked about this on the last pod. So I think you kind of put the three of them to the side with Haslam and Silva. I think KZ becomes the wild card. I think KZ becomes the guy who you plug in in this bench rotation when you want to give Iguodala a night off. I See, I, I think that's what he's actually setting up. And I think it's you establish it with Iguodala. You get a comfort level. But then, you know, some nights it's just uh, Iggy, you know, whatever it's, it's maintenance. Okay. He's got a, he's got a hamstring issue. He's got this, or just, you just want to give him a day off. And then you insert the young legs of Akpala, but you don't really disrupt the rest of the stuff that we're, you're doing. I mean, you, you become a little less savvy, but more athletic at the stage of, of course, that Iguod I mean, Iguodala was an, was an athlete his first few years of his career, but he's not that now. I, I just, I think it makes it easier. Like, Again, when I looked at the bench rotation today, that's what struck me. It's not so – the starting lineup, like, yes, Bam can play with Kelly. They played together before. Eric never seems to stick with Kelly all that long, so we'll see if he sticks with this against some of the better teams, the more physical teams, the teams that can expose Kelly a little defensively. But to me, this was really about establishing, like you said, Greg, kind of what their playoff lineup is going to look like, but mostly their playoff bench, their playoff – Eric values the bench as much as he values the starting lineup. He, you know what he does. If, if you, if there's a starter out, he did this during the whole big three era. He didn't plug Ray Allen into the starting lineup for Dwayne Wade. No. He plugged James Placeholder. Jones in, right? He plugged yeah. Mike Miller in because he didn't want to disrupt that core four on the bench. And so I think that's what this is about. You've got natural chemistry with Achua and Dragic. Okay. It's perfect. Then you get Bradley and Iguodala who give you that defensive presence that you kind of were getting from Iguodala and Crowder last year. You can go three guards with it because you can leave hero on the floor with the two guards. If you want to, he did some of that tonight. You can also, you can flip the bigs because, you know, again, 
if if, if Olenek comes out, Precious comes in, becomes single big, but you can play Precious with Kelly at times and slide down and play a little bit bigger. It really, it, it's funny because I was a little surprised, guys, because usually Crotty and Eric Reed don't do so much lineup rotation talk. And like, maybe it's because they were bored because <laughs> the game got out of control the third quarter, but it's all they were talking about. Crotty kept talking about Eric may have found his ro- rotation. Like they're seeing the same thing we're seeing that Spolster has been searching. And I think like yeah. this is the natural fit. Like the starting lineup is fine. You're not going to get blown out with it. Okay. Like you were with Harkless. And then you get to the bench and you've got a real advantage with those four guys with whichever guy from the starting lineup you keep in. I think it's interesting what Leif said earlier because, uh, you know, like Goron and Iguodala went into the last playoff run with so much time, you know, not playing basketball. And now they're both going to be a part of the rotation, it seems like, for all season. I mean, we knew Dragic was. I I think what Leif was talking about more was Iguodala. And I'm interested to see, you know, what kind of effect that has on them in the playoffs to see if he's not going to be, you know, moving as well or something else that could happen, you know, injuries and things of that nature. Yeah. that's that's honestly to me something to kind of you know be concerned about a little bit, especially if you're going to be running nine. And again, like I'm not really trying to just be like, okay, KZ, 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 but I'm just saying, like, no, but who else it, is there? Like, exactly, that's, that's the thing. And like, um, you would just this is where a Mo Harkless signing, as much as we've harped on it, you hope that it works, mm-hmm. even if it yep. only works for. Th- three weeks if it works for five weeks and you can get through and like uh like you know whether a couple months or or a road trip or whatever the case may be like that's what you need to get out of some of these guys to get through the regular season because what we saw tonight were four guys on the bench that were a cohesive unit they complemented the starting lineup they were able to stagger bam and jimmy in ways that i think are uh healthy for the roster and um that's what you want to get to in the playoffs but they can't do that every single game leading up to so um they're going to have to you know rely on depth the the last piece and then we'll close here and i'm going to run over to the stream i think but like the last piece of this too is we have talked about andre guadala mostly as a contract right i think that's a little bit what you're getting at greg like if they make a trade iguodala and olenic are the (laughs) they're the big numbers to include to make a deal happen i mean not with that point i i I asked somebody about that And they brought up a really good point to me that with the Myers contract, the $9 million, that there was some sort that there was thinking that potentially that $9 million could be used in a, in a trade. And because he's basically not playing, you're able to match salaries and you're not going to be giving up a player that's contributing. So let's hope that that's what takes place (laughs) come trade deadline. Well, because otherwise you're trading at this point, I mean, to make a trade happen, I mean, because again, we've talked about, do you want to give up hero and Akpala and precious and, and all, and maybe Duncan. Okay. And all these like sort of, core young pieces but we talked about okay to make a deal work it's basically olenic and or iguodala and now it's like if you make a trade you're trading a starter yeah <laughs> and you're Which trading your top a nine. core right I mean, you're trading a core bench guy like you're really and, gutting the whole damn thing and more importantly like, like trading iguodala and and kelly and then getting no front court front court guys <laughs> in return i think would be a real problem yeah. like just because i think like yeah, right to the yeah, we already talking about the hole at the four. Imagine if they didn't have Iguodala either, like somebody else who could defend there on the wing. Like they would be a real, real hole, I think, especially with well, you know, the, the play that Harkless we is may giving see, you. Well, if you were to trade six or seven pieces, then you're talking about, okay, then maybe, and Leonard's not one of them or Harkless, you know, isn't one of them, likely isn't one of them. I mean, there's no reason for him to be one of them. Uh, then you're, t- or none. Then you're talking about those three guys going from having no role at all to suddenly being the replacement parts for everybody else that you traded. So that's, again, we're focusing more today on the lineup and where they're going, but it's, it's really interesting. I mean, you're you're really talking about trading six of your top nine potentially, and, you know, and maybe KZ and that's different from what we're expecting. All right. Check out our sponsors, mybookie.ag. use the code five on the floor. And of course mention five reasons when you go to, you break wheel fix, get your wheels redone. You get 15, percent off check out the streams royals holding it down over there we will be back tomorrow night thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network